From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. Google's Messages app now uses RCS to encrypt chats. On Tuesday, Google announced that its Messages app is now more secure and robust with Rich Communication Services, or RCS, a protocol that replaces SMS and encrypts individual and group chat messages end-to-end. RCS will be enabled for new and existing users, allowing them to share high-res photos and videos, see typing indicators, get read receipts, and rename, edit, and remove themselves from group chats. With the updates, Google says all conversations between Messages users, whether one-to-one or group chats, will now be kept private. Electoral Commission apologizes for security breach involving UK voters' data. Confidence in the UK's Electoral Commission may have dwindled after it revealed that a cyber attack that compromised data of 40 million voters went undetected for a year. The attack was discovered last October and reported to the Information Commissioner's Office within 72 hours. However, the regulator did not notify the public for another 10 months. The Electoral Commission apologized for the security breach that exposed full copies of electoral registers, including names and addresses of all voters registered between 2014 and 2022. Data of overseas voters and anonymous voters whose details are kept private for safety reasons were not accessible to the intruders. Banks hit with over $500 million in fines for using out-of-band chat apps. On Tuesday, U.S. regulators announced a combined $549 million in penalties against Wells Fargo and a raft of smaller or non-U.S. firms that failed to maintain electronic records of employee communications. The SEC issued fines totaling $289 million against 11 firms they say admitted using side channels like WhatsApp to discuss company business dating back to 2019, therefore violating federal securities laws by failing to preserve records. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission doled out an additional $260 million worth of fines to four banks for similar records violations. These actions follow recent settlements totaling more than $2 billion with bigger players including J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Citigroup. Malicious extensions can abuse Visual Studio flaw to steal auth tokens. Researchers have discovered a flaw in Microsoft's Visual Studio code editor and development environment that allows malicious extensions to retrieve authentication tokens stored in Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. The tokens are used for integrating with various third-party services and APIs such as GitHub and other coding platforms. The issue stems from a lack of isolation of authentication tokens in VS Code's secret storage API. The researchers were able to decrypt the tokens using a key they could easily derive using the executable path and the machine ID. Using a second flaw in the get full key function, researchers were able to trick VS Code into granting them access to secure tokens from other extensions. Researchers reported the flaw in a working proof of concept to Microsoft two months ago. However, Microsoft has yet to address the issue. And now, a word from our sponsor, Conveyor. Did you catch the biggest release of the year? No, not Barbenheimer. It's Conveyor's GPT-powered security questionnaire response tool, the most accurate questionnaire automation tool on the market. It's so good, you can let your customers upload their own questions in your trust portal and get instant answers based on your content. And of course, it's not just for your customers. You can use GPT questionnaire response tool internally as well to get auto-generated precise answers to entire questionnaires in minutes. So all you have to do is review. Maybe it's time to replace your outdated RFP software. Try a free proof of concept with your own data. To learn more, visit www.conveyor.com. That's C-O-N-V-E-Y-O-R.com. Google is picking up the pace of Chrome security updates. Google will begin issuing Chrome security updates on a weekly basis to accompany the milestone Chrome releases that come every four weeks in its stable channel. Google's weekly updates, which used to be issued bi-weekly, will help close the patch gap between fixes appearing in Canary beta releases and then being rolled out to its stable channel. This reduces the time threat actors have to develop exploits based on beta fixes to try and exploit billions of potentially vulnerable stable channel users. Google says the new weekly updates will start with Chrome 116. And now it's time for You Should Probably Patch That Patch Tuesday edition. Microsoft's August 2023 Patch Tuesday update includes fixes for 74 vulnerabilities, including two that attackers are actively exploiting in the wild. 
Microsoft fixes address six critical bugs and 67 flaws it classified as important across an array of Microsoft products. The first zero day is a denial of service issue assigned a CVSS score of 7.5. The flaw affects multiple versions of .NET and Visual Studio, and attackers can exploit it using low-complexity attacks. Microsoft has now also released a patch for a remote code execution bug in Microsoft Office 2013, 2016, and 2019 under active exploit in the wild. Microsoft initially disclosed the bug in July, but only offered mitigation advice at that time. Additionally, Adobe rolled out a batch of 30 security updates for its Acrobat and Reader software affecting Windows and macOS installations. The software maker documented the security defects in a critical level advisory and warned that successful exploitation could lead to arbitrary code execution, memory leaks, security feature bypass, and application denial of service attacks. 75% of organizations set to ban generative AI. According to results of a global survey released by BlackBerry Limited on Tuesday, 75% of organizations worldwide are currently implementing or considering bans on ChatGPT and other generative AI applications. 61% of those respondents said the measures are intended as long-term or permanent, pointing to risks to data security, privacy, and corporate reputation as driving their decisions. Despite their inclination towards outright bans, the majority also recognize the opportunity for generative AI apps to increase efficiency and innovation and enhance creativity. When it comes to using generative AI tools for cybersecurity defense, the majority of respondents, or 81%, remained in favor, suggesting that IT decision makers don't want to be caught flat-footed and give cybercriminals the upper hand. New downfall CPU attacks steal sensitive data. Google researcher Daniel Mogami has devised a new CPU attack to exploit a side-channel vulnerability dubbed Downfall that affects multiple Intel microprocessor families. Mogami was able to exploit the flaw to steal AES 128-bit and 256-bit cryptographic keys and other sensitive info protected by Intel's hardware-based memory encryption mechanism called Software Guard Extensions, or SGX. Downfall attacks require an attacker to be on the same physical processor core as the victim. However, locally installed malware could also potentially exploit the flaw. Details about the vuln were kept private for almost a year to allow manufacturers and providers to develop a microcode update which is now available to mitigate the issue. However, fully eliminating the risk of downfall attacks requires a complete hardware redesign. Intel downplayed the issue, saying that, quote, trying to exploit this outside of a controlled lab environment would be a complex undertaking, end quote. Mogami has released exploit details and is scheduled to discuss it this week at the Black Hat Security Conference. And that does it for today's cybersecurity headlines, but we've posted more great snippets and highlights from all of our CISO series content on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for CISO series on those platforms and you'll be sure to find us. And remember, we've got our Week in Review show coming up on Friday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Our very own Rich Straffolino will be talking with GE's corporate CISO, Mike Wood, about the biggest cyber news stories of the week. Just head over to our events page at CISOseries.com to register and join us live for a chance to chat with Mike, Rich, and other audience members. See you there. Thank you for listening. I'm Sean Kelly, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.